I'm surprised how he tipped the ball. You know, his hands are really, really long. It's hard, but he's a great defender. Like I said, I, I believe he's the best defender in the NBA. I think he should be first team, so. Great defender, good feet, quick hands. Those quotes I just played are only a few of the NBA players that have publicly praised the outstanding defense of one young player, Jaden McDaniels. Jaden McDaniels is a six foot 10 wing that would give Luka Doncic fits one night, lock up Trey Young the next, and then just follow that up by shutting down LeBron James the next night. You might have seen a few graphs like this from basketball index this year. This one in particular charts your on-ball defense effectiveness and the difficulty of your matchups on a nightly basis. The further right you go, the harder the matchups you have. Guys like Lou Dort, Herb Jones, and Quinton Grimes lead that. The further up you go, the better the on-ball defense. Guys like Dylan Brooks, Derek White, Austin Reeves were near the top. But wait, there was one face I had hidden on this graph. This is where Jaden McDaniels landed. Jaden is undoubtedly one of the two or three best perimeter defenders in the league, and no coach would dispute that. But Jaden is also one of the best rim protectors in the league. Jaden led all wings in block percentage at 1.6%. He dropped opponents expected shooting at the rim by 7%. And he was the only player who recorded more than 75 blocks and 70 steals in the NBA this season. But somehow, on May 9th, this happened. Jaden was left off both the first and second team all defense. Four forwards made the two teams, and Jaden finished six in voting among forwards. The best wing defender in the league did not make an all defense team. It simply doesn't make sense. Many people who probably watched more Timberwolves games than most of the voters voiced their disbelief with the results. But for the remainder of this video, I don't wanna just sit here and talk about how bad the voters are or how much of a snub this really was. Instead, I wanna dive deep into why I think Jaden McDaniels will be the most valuable defensive asset in the NBA over the next 10 years. And maybe we'll talk a little Anthony Edwards at the very end of the video because that duo is something special on the defensive side of the ball. Jaden McDaniels is somewhat of a rarity in the NBA. A high school phenom that fully embraces and excels as a role player early in their NBA career. In case you aren't too into high school basketball like myself, you might not remember that Jaden McDaniels was once the number one ranked overall player in the country. And actually on ESPN's first ever 2020 NBA mock draft, they had Jaden McDaniels at number one and Anthony Edwards at number two. But it wasn't the defense that had everyone excited. Jaden was a skilled six foot 10 wing with a slender build. And like most guys of that archetype, the general public placed the next KD stamp on Jaden. And Jaden really did display a smooth offensive game in high school. But when he got to the University of Washington, everything wasn't exactly smooth. Jaden struggled with efficiency, he wasn't always disciplined on defense, and he led the Pac-12 in technical fouls. This caused him to drop to the 28th overall pick in the 2020 NBA draft. He was actually second on the priority list for the team that drafted him, the Timberwolves, at that point in the draft, as they had just traded up to take Leandro Balmaro a few picks earlier. Jaden didn't play any minutes outside of garbage time for the first month of his rookie year until a January 20th game against the Orlando Magic. The Wolves finally put him into the rotation and Jaden did not waste any time. He made defensive play after defensive play all night. He finished with three blocks and had multiple forced turnovers like this one that led to runouts on the other end. On that night, it became clear. Jaden's defensive talent was undeniable and he was going to do whatever he could to use that gift to earn himself minutes. Jaden never looked back. In his first two seasons, he proved to be one of the best young defenders in the NBA. This graph was posted by B-Ball Index after his second season, showing that he was the most effective rim protector of any guard or wing in the league. But then, Jaden made a third year leap. And it all started with his ability to shut down NBA All-Stars on the perimeter. With Jared Vanderbilt gone, Jaden was getting the toughest defensive assignment every single night for the Wolves. One of the first guys Jaden absolutely terrorized was Luka Doncic. These are some of the clips from the Wolves game against the Mavericks in December. As you can see, Luka just could not get by Jaden, who moves his feet better than anyone else at his height. Luka was turning it over left and right. 
the mavericks obviously set a ton of ball screens but they really couldn't get a switch because of how incredible Jaden is at navigating ball screens luca finished that night five for 17 from the field with four turnovers and of course this clip went pretty viral from a later meeting between these two teams Jaden and ant not even allowing luca and kyrie to get a game-winning shot attempt off at the end of the game i personally think this was the beginning of the mavericks downfall this season against Jaden mcdaniels this year luka Doncic averaged 23.5 points per 100 matchups his season average was 43.1 points per 100 matchups Jaden also terrorized smaller guards this year damian lillard being one of them and jamal murray being another both guys frequently got their perimeter jumpers blocked by Jaden, something that is usually very rare. Jamal Murray even made a comment about Jaden's ability to block his jumpers with the media. You go down the list, star after star was significantly less effective versus Jaden than the rest of the league. This list of guys that were locked up by Jaden was compiled by the Timberwolves when they made a whole website campaigning for Jaden to make all defense. But that campaign didn't matter because half the voters probably didn't watch more than a couple Timberwolves games all season. Here's another b-ball index graph that was posted following the year. There was a reason the Timberwolves were dead set on keeping this man in the Rudy Gobert trade. We've seen Anthony Edwards go for 30 points in the playoffs five times already, but he's also turning into one of the best defenders in the league. And we've seen Jaden McDaniels lock up the league's best, but he also has a rapidly advancing offensive skill set, reminding people why he was such a coveted high school prospect on that end. When Anthony Edwards missed time this spring with an injury, Jaden took on a role as a primary scorer for the Wolves. Over the four games Ant missed, Jaden averaged 22 points a night and carried that confidence into the rest of the season. There is a world in which Jaden is eventually a 20 points per game scorer and a depoy candidate alongside Ant, who could possibly be a top five player in the league pretty soon. Everyone anointed Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown as the league's best wing duo of the next decade but i'm here to tell you i don't think it's them i think it's anthony edwards and Jaden mcdaniels if you enjoyed this video make sure you check out the one we did about pat Connaughton. nolan called pat the best athlete in the nba and i think he gives some pretty valid arguments as to why he made that claim that might surprise you as always thank you guys so much for the support and we'll see you in the next video